Hi folks, I got a little banjo lesson here for you. Uh, this one's talking about um, a backup lick. Uh, it's the one that you hear a lot in Scruggs type of songs that uh, if you're in the key of G, it starts up here at the 12th fret or the 17th, depends on which way you play the, play the lick, but it's uh, the typical way you hear it is 12, 14, 17, and back to 14 and 12, and then it goes to the second string there for a second before resolving back to the uh, G note. So it goes something like this. And sometimes you kind of hear it in reverse and it starts up at the 17th. And the good thing I like about this lick, first of all, you can play it for backup and sometimes you can work it into a solo, but it's really good backup lick. Uh, typically when you're playing backup, your licks uh, are used to fill space, but also most of the time if you're playing this lick, it doesn't uh, exactly match the melody of, of most songs. So you can, you can play the lick without being on top of um, the singer who might be trying to sing the melody of the song. It kind of stays away from it most of the time. Let me show you some places you can use this. Another reason I like it uh, so much as I started thinking about doing this lesson was you can play it as uh, a tag lick, a G lick, uh, that kind of takes the place of the, the traditional low position lick. Okay, you can work that one in instead of that lick. Um, also, it can work as a D lick. So some, you, in the place of uh, this lick. It's the same amount of space, which is usually about a measure, I think. Uh, and then my, one of my favorite ways to work it in is to play it over uh, a G to C um, chord change. Uh, and you can sometimes drag out the, this part of it over the C, and it sounds really good, a little bit bluesy. Uh, so let me show you all three of those ways if I can get through this without messing up too much and having to restart. But uh, let's try nine pound hammer. Uh, and the first time I'm going to play it, I'm going to play it as a tag lick. I'm going to play it in between the verse and the chorus instead of. All right, let's see how it goes. I have a nine pound hammer. It's a little too heavy for my size. But if for my size. Somebody, don't you roll so slow? How can I roll? But the wheels don't blow. So on that one, I actually played it twice. That, that same lick. Uh, the first time I played it, I played it in between the verse and the chorus. Uh, and then the second time I played it, I played it in place of the D chord instead of. See my little dog. Hey, Butterball. She gets her five minutes of fame here. Um, let me try one more place if I can weave it in. It's hard for me to, to sing and, and play the, these backup licks at the same time, but one of my favorite places is uh, as you're starting a phrase of a song before it goes to the four chord, before it goes to the C, and as you're doing the C, you can, you can drag this lick out. So let me see if I can try this one. I'm a nine pound hammer, it's a little too heavy. For my size, buddy, for my size, roll on, buddy. Hopefully you could hear the song uh, progressing there. I had to drop out on singing it, but uh, you, a lot of times you start up on, on the 17th on that one. And you can go to... Um, the 15th fret there, which gets your, your G7. So that kind of implies that you might be changing chords. And then sometimes I, I, I don't do that seventh there, but I keep dragging out the slide on the second string. pretty flashy so you don't want to do that one all the time but it's, it's a good progression there to, to play on backup so I hope you guys uh, can get something out of that really good utility 
uh, backup lick and you can start to figure out ways you can put it into your songs. Thanks for watching.